Welcome to this week's program of Ascend Life on the Autism Spectrum. I'm Keith Halperin. And I'm Will Burnick. And today we have a very special personal show where we're going to be speaking with our correspondents and cast members about their lives on the autism spectrum. But before we begin, I gotta ask Will, what's with the shirt today? Funny you should ask that. This week's shirt is my Best Buys Inclusion shirt. I got it when I from the Best Buys friendship walk that that from the friendship walk that Best Buys just had last month. We it was in Golden Gate Park and everyone from Best Buys and Ascend participated in it. We walked all around Golden Gate Park. That's what I've heard that it was one of the very biggest, if not the biggest, and you raised a lot of money for a very good cause. It yes we did. We, it was a lot of it was a lot of work but it was worth it. The first person we'll be talking with is uh, Stacy Kennedy, our cultural correspondent. So Stacy, I understand you run your own business, uh, Stacy's Puppy Love. Can mm -hmm. you tell us about it, how you started, and so on? Sure. Um, it was around back in 2011 um, is when I, uh, pet, I was pet sitting for uh, a couple that lives up in St. Francis Woods um, in San Francisco. and. And since then, I, I decided maybe I'd just make a little business of it. And then I started pet sitting for another family. And then they really liked what I did. They liked how I followed instructions. And I um, and not just pet sitting. I also house sit. I can water plants. I can uh, take out the garbage. Uh, mail intake. So, uh, so yeah, pretty much I, I uh, developed that since 2011. And... And if, uh, if I'm given instructions and if I know what to do, then I will do it very well. You, I think a while ago, Stacy, you'd mentioned uh, a program to our group uh, mm -hmm. at the general meeting about uh, autism awesomeness. Oh, yes. Please um, tell us about that. Yes, autism awesomeness is an annual ce celebration that happens in San Rafael. Karen Kaplan is the... Uh, Founder of it, she runs it. She uh, runs her own nonprofit called Offerings, and it's it's an event where there's a talent show. You see lots of other talents and entertainment, like music. You even meet writers. They'll probably read a little bit from their their book, right? And there's also like a mini type of resource fair. Or so, well, there's tables of other nonprofits trying to promote themselves and try you know, trying to get the word out there for their organization. So that's the kind of event Autism Awesomeness is. And awesomeness, I like that because it almost sounds like autism or auto awesome. They, they almost sound the same, you know, the, the first parts, right? Um, but I also, uh, I have one thing to bring up. I'm also part of the Miracle Project, which is run by uh, DeclaresArts.com, dot org, excuse me. And it's... um. It's workshops, uh, uh, it's improv for interactions, so it, it's um, workshops on improv and lots of things that um, you could do theatrically or, or even, even film-like, too. When did, you, when did you learn about your autism? I learned about my autism, well, there was some suspicion when I was about, like, 12 or 14 or so, but the time I really learned about it I was 26 or so and um and it made me think back to like yeah you know there's some s social anxieties that I had and also um sensitivity like to touch and to noise and most things I've had most of my life that and I think you know that makes a lot of sense you know I could I could have this and I'd say around 26 years old or so and thinking of those um issues that I had that's when I learned about autism. What advice would you give to others on the autism spectrum? I'd just say, you know, take one day at a time. And I know saying hang in there sometimes doesn't always help or so, but I mean, whatever you could do to make things easier for yourself and more healthy, um, d d like do so. If you have to say no to somebody on something, um, I know how hard that can be, but um, just, just let, 
put your foot down and um, you, you just you can give it to them any way you want just you know you can give it to them gently or if someone's really being harsh on you just say no I really can't what advice would you give to others on the autism spectrum get involved in activities that that most uh, that, that seem to interest you and that that seem to you know heighten your talents and so on uh, get into get involved in things that that works for you thank you stacy we really appreciate it and we look forward to later in the program with your uh cultural report thank you. Okay. we now go on to jennifer brooks our book correspondent but we will be interviewing her now and later on we'll have her uh book review so jennifer tell us about what you're doing now outside of the show your real life what's your employment situation okay my employment situation recently took a dramatic turn for the better when I was contacted through LinkedIn by a recruiter. He was recruiting GIS technicians for one of the big tech companies located here in the Bay Area. So I recently began working for that tech company as a GIS technician. Now, I can't tell you very much because they want me to keep it confidential for the most part. But have you ever used a service, anyone here, such as Google Maps, Yahoo Maps, Apple Maps, or MapQuest, to either look up an address or get directions from point A to point B? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, yes, I'm sure most of us have at some point. Have you ever wondered who made those maps and how they made them? Well, now I'm the one who's working on making those maps. Really good, really good. Um... Can you tell us your educational background? How did you get trained and where did you go to school to learn these things? Oh, huh. Well, first of all, I have a bachelor's degree from UC Santa Cruz. And I got that degree back in 2003, but the GIS field was very underdeveloped at that time. And so it wasn't until more than 10 years later in 2015 when I got my GIS certificate from Foothill College, local community college, but they have an excellent program with excellent instructors, the best you could hope for. And then I went on to receive a master's degree in statistics from CSU East Bay. Oh, very good. What is it that you like about doing this type of work? What attracts you to GIS? Well. I am very analytical by nature, and so GIS is just a natural fit because it's you know, one way of analyzing data and using it to solve problems, like the transportation problems that we have here in the Bay Area that we all know about. So in a way, I'm doing a public service, not the sort of public service I imagined when I was younger, mm -hmm. but still a public service because first of all it's the service of providing those web maps that give people directions from point A to point B but on a larger scale well I'm helping to prepare the world for the expected takeover of self-driving cars which may help to relieve some granted not all but some of the transportation problems that we face very good. Will, will you take it from here? Tell, tell us, when did you learn about your autism? I learned about my autism on my 30th birthday. Happy birthday, you have autism. Sorry we couldn't tell you this 30 years ago. Three decades too late is better than never. It came after a devastating job loss and career failure. And when I finally got the diagnosis, the explanation, it pretty much came as a relief because, I mean, all my life I sort of had this sense that I wasn't really like other people. Unfortunately, I grew up during the era of social constructionism when it was believed and pounded into everybody's heads that there are no neurological differences between people whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Every difference in behavior, with the, with the exception of homosexuality, is purely a social construction. And there was no effort made whatsoever to attempt to meet my needs because all the resources were consumed with trying to socially construct everyone else to have Asperger's. Didn't work. What, advi what advice would you give to others on the autism spectrum? Well, 
first and foremost, I would say don't give up. I mean, life is hard. I've been through it myself. I've been through job loss. I've been through career failure. I've been through not understanding why I can't just be like other people when it's supposed to be so freaking easy. I've been there and I've been through it and now I have a good life. And if I can do it, anybody can do it. You can do it too. My advice would be, you know, find a support group. If you're here in the Bay Area, come to one of our ASEN meetings. You'll be surrounded by other people who can understand your situation, who've been through a lot of the same things that you've been through, and who will forgive you for having less than perfect social skills. Now we'll talk with my co-host, Will Burnick. So Will, tell us what you're doing outside of the show. What's your employment situation like currently? I'm glad you asked. Right now I'm working in Independent Housing Social Services. It's a, it's a firm that helps with the elderly living. I do filing, organizing, shredding, and data entry. Uh, I, I've done that. I'm I've done that office work before. I'm used to it. <laughs> do you like that kind of work? Yes. Good, good, good. Okay. And so, where did you go to school? Tell us about your educational background. That's easy. I first I went to Claire Lowenthal for middle and and grade school. Then I went to George Washington High. Then Cal State East Bay. Mm -hmm. And then I graduated, and now I'm here. Very good. Okay. Now, I understand you're very involved in a variety of volunteer activities. What could you tell us about those? I'm, I'm, involved, I'm, involved, with, I'm involved with the Presidio. I do volunteer work in the Presidio outside, and, then, and I volunteer at the temple every other Friday night. I, as I've said in many, in many episodes, I'm involved with Best Buddies. So you mentioned that you do some things at the uh, Presidio. What sort of activities do you do there? I I do vo I do outside outside gardening. I mm -hmm. water. I weed. I I I plant pot new plants. You are good. How 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 often do you do that? Did you say? Every, also every other Sunday. Oh, very good. Sometimes even Saturdays. Oh, very good indeed. And and then on, on on some other Sundays I run Dolphin South End races in Golden Gate Park, the Presidio Marina, or in one case or Julius Kahn Park in one case. What are those? I'm not familiar with that. They're 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 Sunday they're five K races. They're five K running races that I volunteer with that I participate in, where I run f f two to three miles. So you run 5K uh, on a regular basis? That's very impressive. I just learned that when you were at uh, Cal State East Bay, you were also participating in a TV program or programs. Tell us what you did there. I'm glad you asked. While I was there, I was I was on the TV. I was also on the TV station at, on campus, and I I I didn't. I interviewed the students and teachers. What advice would you give to friends and family on the autism spectrum? I would advise them to just to, to just participate in, in whatever activities they can. So Will, when did you learn about your autism? When I was either when I was when I was six years old. Mm -hmm. I, I, I learned what I learned I learned about my disability too soon. But why, why do you say that? Why too soon? Cause, cause most people don't even learn they're autistic till till late in life, but I learned mine when when I was when I was little. But but at least but at least then I I knew I knew I was I was gonna be different from everyone else, and and I was and I was ready for that. I I had a lot of 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 Paris helping me, so 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 I was so. So I didn't have to, so, so I didn't have to worry about that. That I think is a very good thing. And many of our uh, listeners and uh, viewers, I think would be, have been very grateful if they had been diagnosed. I know I certainly would have been. So I would I too. Mm -hmm. Yep, absolutely. And then finally, well, where do you hope to be in 10 years? What do you want to do 
uh, over the next 10 years with your life? Well, hopefully... Um, I, I guess just doing this show and... And... And helping the, the rest of the autism community? Well, we certainly hope the show continues with you for a good long time, and we know what contributions you'll be making will be very valuable to us. And now I guess it's my turn uh, to be interviewed, a.k.a. be in the hot seat. Bill? Uh, now, now, I, so I guess it's my turn now, Keith. Um, tell us, uh, tell us about your, tell us about your advocacy, tell us about your advocations. Well, one of my big things here is my uh, advocacy in the autistic community doing things like this, like being on the Ascend board, uh, like helping with the uh, job club both at the monthly meeting and uh, the Monday night virtual meeting, which we have. Uh, hint, hint, if anyone is interested, please contact me. Um, so I would say a large portion of my avocational interest comes through doing things through Ascend. Now, what, ad what advice would you give to family and friends of, of other adults on the autism spectrum? That's a very hard question, and I know I was thinking about it uh, as we were asking other people that, and I think it really depends on the particular person. But what I would say is, as other people have said, be out there, don't isolate, you're not alone. There are a lot of other people out there who are in your same or very equivalent situation. Uh, it's very hard to be alone. Uh, sometimes you have to work harder to find people like yourself, but we are out there and we support you. Uh, the other is be as functional as you can be. Be all the things that you can, recognizing that we all have limitations, but within that extent we should try and accomplish uh, as much as we possibly can and make our lives as meaningful as we can. So Keith, uh, tell us about what you're doing now outside the show, your real life, and what is your employment situation? Mm -hmm. Do I have a real life? Um, but seriously, uh, I'm working as a contract recruiter. This is what I've been doing for over 20 years. Mm -hmm. I'm working for a um, solar energy company uh, in Sunnyvale. And uh, I feel very fortunate that because having worked for a wide variety of com companies, both big and small, I've been in some which are very functional and ve some very dysfunctional, some which are very sort of implicitly uh, spectrum friendly, in other words, that they, you know, are very easygoing and tolerate uh, mm -hmm. a wide variety of behavior, and others are not. And uh, I'm very fortunate, and this is one of the former. It's a very easygoing, friendly company and very supportive of me. Good. When did you learn about your autism? I'm not sure I actually ever did. Mm -hmm. Which is to say, I've never been formally diagnosed. I yeah. think I'm on the spectrum. Mm -hmm. I've displayed a lot of the things mm -hmm. that people on the spectrum do, but I don't display a lot of the things that are commonly thought of. So I basically started learning about autism uh, as we are learning more about the autism of my son. Things. Mm -hmm. So I would say I started learning things and thinking maybe it applies to me as well mm -hmm. about, oh, somewhere around 10 to 12 years ago. Okay. So Keith, where do you hope to be in the next 10 years? What are your goals for the future? As far as my advocacy work uh, with them, I hope to be able to help Ascend and our affiliated organizations uh, go and grow offering a uh, increasing variety of programs and helping the community in an increasing variety of ways. So that's pretty much it. Well, I hope you've learned a little bit more about us over the last 20 minutes or so. And if you did, I hope you found it uh, interesting and enjoyable. And we're now going to go on to our cultural correspondent, uh, Stacy Kennedy. Thank you, Keith. Today, uh, some things I'd like to uh, share. Uh, there's some sensory friendly films. Uh, there's two I like to share. May 22nd is uh, Deadpool 2. 
and May 26th, Saturday, May 26th, is Show Dogs. And again, ch check your uh, participating theaters at amctheaters.com. Um, June 15th, there's a music group called Kitka it, um, performing at the Pomeroy, Pomeroy Center, 207 Skyline Boulevard. Um, friends, with dis friends with disabilities or anybody, it's, um, it's free for them. Uh, the general uh, the general cost is 15 otherwise. Uh, yeah, but there's going to be music, light, and refreshments, people of all ages, a f venue fully accessible or so. Um, but yeah, Kitka is actually Americans Women's uh, Vocal Arts Ensemble inspired by traditional songs and vocal techniques from Eastern Europe. It's my first time hearing about it. So, yeah. Stacy, I've heard Kitka before, and I think uh, they are quite fine and mm -hmm. uh, our viewers may very much enjoy hearing mm -hmm. them either okay. again or for the first time. And now we'll hear from Jennifer Brooks, our book correspondent. Thank you, Keith. Today I would like to tell you about two books that are more scientific than the books that I have reviewed in the past. The first is a book called Connectome. Now unfortunately the subtitle of this book how the Brain's Wiring Makes Us Who We Are is a little bit misleading because the book is not really about that. Unfortunately, that book hasn't been written yet. What this book is about is the development of the research and the technology that will eventually enable the other book to be written. The reason why I'm recommending this is because it does a good job of explaining where the science is and why it's not yet where it should be. So think of it this way. During the Middle Ages, people thought that the plague was caused by some sort of curse from God. Because they didn't have microscopes, they couldn't see bacteria. It wasn't until several hundred years later that someone did invent the microscope, then people could finally see bacteria, then people could finally realize that the plague is caused by bacteria. It's not caused by divine wrath. So when the technology is developed that will enable us to see individual connections between individual brain cells, we may be able to realize that autism and perhaps other behavioral differences are the result of differences in connections between individual brain cells. They are not social constructions. Thank you, Jennifer. We'll now have a special addition to our program. We're going to be talking with Matthew McIntyre, who is our very capable producer. And consequently, you haven't likely seen him before, uh, or at least for very recent periods of time. So Matthew, are you on the spectrum as well? Yes, I am. OK, good. I am employed at Amazon through the Prime Now, uh, Prime Now uh, department. Mm -hmm. I mostly do delivery prep. Uh, it's sort of similar to those uh, online uh, delivery uh, companies such as Instacart, Postmates, or Do Do DoorDash, mm -hmm. except we deliver groceries within two hours, or one hour in some cases. We have almost anything in, anything on, in stock that you can think of, soda, drinks, shampoo, etc. And I'm just mostly finding those items and picking them. Very good to hear. So what is your educational background? My educational background is I graduated from high school in, through their special uh, needs program. Mm -hmm. And I have some, exp some college experience, community college experience, but I have never graduated. Okay. Okay. And then can you tell us about your volunteer activities outside of work? My volunteer activities include um, DJing for special events. It's mostly just for fun. Mm -hmm. My, I have some experience as a as a uh, radio personality, but I have gone freelance to learn more about the trade. Tell us about tell us about your advocations. My advocations include uh, mostly in my spare time I play video games for fun, and I also, as I mentioned before, I'm a rate I'm a radio person former radio personality for a small community college. I'm hoping to go back to uh, to that radio station and con conclude my uh, uh, back my uh, education in radio broadcasting, a as well as um, 
doing some yard 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 work on the side. Do you idolize anyone with autism? Unfortunately, I cannot think of anyone at this time who has autism that I idolize, but my uh, biggest influences and mentors would be Tommy Tallarico, who is a video game composer, who has a video, video game concert series called Video Games Live, where he plays video game music done by a live orchestra, as well as uh, my special, I guess, my special needs teacher, the late uh, Jeff Rierig, who uh, helped fund a uh, scholarship for uh, children with disabilities. Um, when did you learn about your autism? I learned about my uh, autism when I was diagnosed at age 11, but I didn't know, but I was not of sound mind at the time. And I didn't, uh, I didn't relearn learn about it until I was 29. And it actually was a lot better for me um, since then, since I've Learn. Since then, I've become part of a wonderful organization. I'm in a in a very successful relationship, as well as uh, producing this this t program, as well as working for for something that I like to do. So, Matt, what advice would you give to other people on the autism spectrum, as well as family, friends, teachers, anyone who interacts with them? I guess the best way that I can, best advice I can give to those on the spectrum is, be yourself. Don't let anyone get you down, and try to do the best you can. As for parents and family and friends, who, for who have, who know adults who have family members on the spectrum, try to go easy on them. They might be a little more, they might be a little different than your average person. But they're, they're still human, and they can still learn, and they still feel the same way that we feel. Well, folks, this is our program for this week, and I hope you've seen over the last half hour or so that there are a wide variety of people on the spectrum leading very full and meaningful lives with a great uh, diversity and experience, and we hope that might provide uh, a bit of... Uh, value and encouragement to you and those who care for you out there. So until this week, until rather next week, I'm Keith Halperin. I'm Will Burnick. I'm Stacey Kennedy. I'm Jennifer Brooks. It's Life on the Autism Spectrum. Until next time, have a great week.